Okay, this is going to be a short video to show off a um, little project that I've been working on for a little while. It's a Z80 computer, although it's not the computer that I worked on before. I'm going to upload some schematics and, of course, uh, the board. I'm going to uh, show that off. I've actually had this one printed by a board house, and I have a monitor up and going now. And uh, I'm also working on some assembly work of rewriting Tiny Basic for this computer. So I'm just going to showcase the monitor a little bit, give you a little bit of a sneak peek at what I'm working on. Okay, so I'm going to boot it up now. I'll say that. Uh, just joke. Give me just a moment. All right, I'm back. Now we're going to try it. Hey, there we go. All right. So to give you an idea about the um, composition of this computer. It is a Zilog processor. It has 32K of RAM and 32K of ROM. It does have a Zilog um, SIO. The particular one that I'm using is the SIO0 as well as a um, 8255PIO by Intel. Um, all decoding is done with a single chip. What I'm using is a uh, generic array logic 22V10 and of course I've got two RS-232 ports and I have breakouts for both the PIO and the Z80 data bus well the Z80 bus period I've got all 40 pins brought out so we're gonna just go over some of the <laughs> things that we can do here all right so as you can see there is a help menu and we can type in help here oh by the way this is not case sensitive so I can use capitals or lowercase it doesn't matter but if I type help I get a list of um, list of commands and uh, they are in alphabetical order but realistically uh, probably the three most important ones would be um, call dump and then uh, mod mem which mod mem is a memory modification tool that I've written so let's just go ahead and dump a location of memory let's go and as you can see we've got the dumper tool here now, as you can tell, I've not only uh, labeled the addresses and the contents therein, but also the ASCII values of it, so if you can actually see text and things like that out to the side. And of course, if we dump a location of memory that has that information, then you will be able to see it. So, there we go. Now, if you take a look right there, um, there is plenty of uh, text right there. It's just showing you the ASCII values. So. Uh, something I think every single hex viewer should have. But anyways, um, so that is the dumper tool. Of course, it dumps 256 locations of memory. Now, let's take a look at some of the other commands. Uh, probably the next one that's of importance would be mod mem. So, let's go. Let's modify uh, starting at location 8. Zero, zero, zero. Now this is the beginning of RAM, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here. Now as you can see here at the very bottom you've got the address and you also have the values that are there. Now if we actually scroll up you can see 51 was what was that location 8000. Same thing down here we're getting 51 right here. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to plug in some you know dead values. And we're going to dump the same area of memory. And whenever we do, we can see that now those values have been changed to all zeros. Now, just to prove my point, So we can see one one two two three three four four five five. Okay. Now let's take a look at some of the other commands here. Um, obviously, we've got um, the clear screen. Of course, it clears the screen. And um, of course, we've already tried help call. That one's obvious, but we actually have to have a location to run from. So. Um, 
we've got in and out. So, uh, for example, out. Let's um, let's go with the uh, data port of the SIO. I believe it's port zero zero. It's either zero zero or zero two. I can't remember. Ah, yeah. So, hex value forty one. That translates to the letter A. And just to prove that, this should print B. If you hear that noise going in the background, that's actually my 3D printer. It's right here on my computer desk. All right, but anyways, that's what we're looking at. But we also have the in function, of course. In, and uh, let's go with uh, port 81. That is the uh, uh, first port of the PIO, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, zero zero is all low. But anyways, we can read in from ports, and then obviously we have a restart. So it re software restart, and then um, just to showcase the call command, we're just going to restart the computer. There we go. So, jump right back to the first location of memory, which is essentially a restart for the Z80. Alright, and of course, again, help is already there. But, um, it's really a useful computer if you're looking at adding assembly language. Something I am working on, though, at the moment is I am working on a port of Tiny Basic. I'm in the process of translating all the mnemonics over to Zilog mnemonics, and I'm also in the process of rewriting. Um, the uh, Dr. Wayne's version into uh, something that's a little bit more um, powerful. I, I, my intention is to actually uh, not only size it down, but also allow it to use the more powerful routines used by the Z80. Uh, there's a lot of things that it can do that the 8080 just couldn't do. But in either case, uh, that's one of the plans. And then also I'm in the process of trying to figure out how I'm going to um, uh, add some type of uh, disk utility to this. Um, obviously, a computer's no good if can't save. We could always do an X modem routine um, to and from over the serial uh, port into the computer. That's fantastic, but I'm also looking at some other things. For example, possibly a cassette port or um, some type of SD or uh, compact flash, but we'll get to that as we get there. Anyhow, but that's just a quick view. Um, I'll you know, post this up on YouTube hopefully this evening. That way you can get an idea as far as what I've been working on here lately and the reason why I haven't uploaded any new videos. Um, I spent about, I want to say close to a month writing this uh, particular uh, boot ROM. And it is fairly complex. It's about, I'd say, two and a half kilobytes of machine code. So out of 32, it's not very much, but in the grand scheme of things, I mean, considering that, you know, a lot of the early mini computers, you know, the, their entire um, boot ROMs were, let's say, 2 to 4K, um, that's pretty big, especially whenever you're writing it in assembly. Um, you know, assembly, it doesn't take much to, you know, space to get it done, and in a computer this size, you don't really need a whole lot, but you do need something that works dependably, and I went back over this and went over it and went over it and went over it, cleaned up my code, rewrote wrote it. Uh, I, I've done that probably 50 times or more, and of course, I'll take a break for a week or two at a time, but anyhow, that's what I'm up to. I'll uh, try to get some schematics of everything uh, added to this, that way you can actually see what the computer is designed as, and... We'll just kind of, uh, I don't know, we may end up offering a couple boards here before too long, see if somebody's interested. So, anyways, uh, that's it for now. All right. Here is the board. Um, it's a pretty simple layout. It's pretty densely packed on the bottom half, as you can tell. Um, there's the Zilog to the left, a ROM, a narrow SRAM. This is one uh, similar to what you would find on either a 386 or a 486 computer. It has a Zilog SIO. Actually, the one that you're looking at here is a, is a Z80 Dart. Uh, I've got a couple of different boards that I'm playing with. They, um, the Dart and the SIO are essentially the same. There's no real difference between the two. 
um, there is also a um, 8255 PIO on the right. Now, decoding is done by the chip that's long ways, kind of in the middle of the board. It's uh, there right next to the uh, power connector. It says Latisse on it. It's a uh, generic array logic 22V10. Now, what those are is they're essentially programmable logic. Okay, it's um, the earliest PLDs, if you will. And it takes care of all the address and uh, uh, decoding for memory and I.O. space. The two chips above it are just the um, TTL to RS-232 uh, level converters. They're at the max 3232 CPE. And what they do is they take the logic from a 5 volt level and they output uh, plus or minus 12 volt. Now, next or below the power connector, you can see there's a header brick out there. What that is, it's actually the Z80 uh, bus, if you will. It's got all the address pins, clock pins, everything that the chip itself has, it has a breakout right there for it. The other header on the right hand side of the board at the top, that is actually a uh, PIO. Uh, breakout. It has all 24 pins of I.O. along with power and ground. And I'm not sure if it's the same pinout that they use with uh, the uh, parallel ports on computers because a lot of those actually use 8255. Some of them uh, even use the 80 PIOs. But in either case it has uh, port A along the left hand side at the bottom Port C is on the right hand side at the bottom and then port B is at the top with uh, the very two top pins being power and ground. Ground on the left, power, um, power on the, or 5 volt on the right. Uh, this board is 5 volt only so you don't have to worry about mixing voltages. Um, and then of course the uh, reset button is right there in the middle. Now down at the bottom we have two different clocks. Um, the, the clock on the left is the CPU clock. And the CPU clock on this particular board is being run at eight, or I'm sorry, six megahertz, versus the uh, clock on the right, which is the uh, baud rate generator clock, and it um, is a 1.8432 megahertz, and it's being divided internally by the Z80 Dart down to um, uh, 57600 baud. Now, that's pretty much all there is to the board. Um, I know you don't see any uh, resistors or capacitors, that's because they're on the bottom side. They are surface mount, as you saw in the previous schematic. But as you can tell, I actually have had a few of these made, and they seem to work well. I don't have any problems with them. So if you have any questions about the board itself, give me a shout. Okay, well, I thought I would show you a little bit about the schematic of this board. Um, there's really not that much to it. Uh, it's a single page, as you can see, and uh, essentially what we're looking at here is a very, I'm going to say a very minimally decoded system. Uh, there's, there's really not a lot to it, so let's just kind of go over it real quick. First off, we have the CPU, and of course uh, these are the lines coming off of it, and they just go into the same bus that goes throughout the entire board. Okay, and of course, I'm using it that way in equal just because it's easier. I don't have to try to uh, show how each line connects up to what. I can just label li a line and add it to it and call it good. So, um, anyhow. Now, um, aside from the Z80, we actually have a header here. Now this header is all 40 pins of the Z80 brought out, that way you can actually expand with a secondary board. And then um, we got some decoding logic that's right here. This is a um, Latisse 22V10, it's a generic array logic. And as you can see, it basically takes in uh, the A15 to be able to decode between upper and lower memory, that along with uh, memory request. It uses I.O. and then uh, A7 through A2 in order to decode uh, the addresses. And then um, uh, read and write are in there as well, but realistically, they don't really need to be. That's for something that I'm planning on doing in the future. Um, I'm eventually going to set this up because it does use a um, electrically erasable uh, ROM. And 
in the future, I plan on actually being able to use that as a kind of a, um, I guess you could call it a firmware update, but it's going to, um, you know, require uh, the read and uh, write values, and it's only going to allow you to write into a specific area of memory. So anyways, uh, that, that's kind of the plan with that, but that's a side point. This is all of the decoding that is on the board, period. All right. Now, we have our uh, ROM and RAM, um, uh, 28C256 and a uh, 32K SRAM. Uh, the SRAM that I'm using is actually a narrow dip. Uh, it's a .300, and uh, it's 32K. It's just like you'd find in, you know, um, 386 or 486 era computer for the uh, uh, cache memory. Um, let me see. We got our Dart. It's a, uh, it's actually a SIO, but uh, it's pin compatible with the Dart. The SIO zero is. So, um, got all the lines broke out for that. Uh, as you can see, each port has both RTS and CTS brought out, and that's important for handshaking at a later time. And of course, along with the um, SIO, we have two Max 232s, or in this case, Max 3232 CPEs, which uh, they're the ones that are actually good down to, um, I think it's 3.3 volt logic. So they could take 3.3 volt signals in and spit out, you know, uh, I think it's actually minus 9 and plus 9, but in any case, it works fine for my application. And um, of course, we have our two uh, DB9s. Um, both of them are male, and these are set up to be um, the same as your computer. Um, you have to actually use a null modem cable with this computer in order to be able to talk to anything. Um, but it does have two ports, and as it sits right now, only port A is being used for communication. So that, that uh, port B, it's realistically, I mean, it's being set up every time that the computer starts, but I'm not utilizing it for anything at the moment. But it could potentially be utilized for, let's say, serial mouse or whatever floats your boat. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you could even control a couple of devices with it if you'd like. Uh, we've got our CPU clock. Uh, this particular computer, uh, the one that I have demonstrated with, is being run at 6 megahertz. And then for the um, baud rate clock, I'm using a 1.8432 megahertz oscillator. And of course that's being divided by 32 to give us a baud rate of 57600. Now we have our 8255, and our 8255, it's again just brought out into a 26 pin header. And I don't know if this is the same pin out that they use for parallel ports. Um, kind of hard to say, but this is how it is on the board. So if you're looking at it from the top, you'd have grounded uh, power, and then you'd have port B up here at the top, port A on this side, port C on that side. So I think that's pretty close to the way that they do it on PCs and other uh, um, other computers that actually have a uh, parallel port breakout, but I'm not entirely positive about that. So now if we go over here and we look at the board, this is the board. And of course, I'll, I'll give you an actual uh, shot of it as well. But I actually am pretty happy with the way I got this laid out. As you can see, the uh, capacitors and the resistors are surface mount, and they are on the bottom side. Okay. Now, the reason why I did that was because there was not a lot of room. There is a lot of stuff just crammed on this board. Um, you might be able to fit one or two ICs up here, but realistically, that's all that you're going to get. You're not going to get anything else on this board. At least not you know, um, any big components. I'd say nothing bigger than an SRAM. Because, again, it's got a lot of stuff on here. And I have thought about going back and possibly uh, redoing this board a little bit and using a CH340G um, a TTL serial to USB serial adapter. And uh, just putting a couple of USB ports on here. That way I could power it from that. But as it sits right now, this works fine. I've got a serial port on my computer, and I think most people that don't have a serial port probably have one of those USB to serial adapters, especially if you're watching any of my videos, because that means that you're into this kind of stuff and you probably need to have one. So at the end of the day, it is one of those things, um, you know, 
it, I made this for me, but if other people are interested, I may end up providing uh, boards. I've got a couple left over, and I plan on uh, doing a reorder with a couple small changes that I have. Um, one thing I do want to point out, though, is, um, and of course, these are not labeled, so I will actually label them right here for you. course there's not much room to do so but um, there are pull-up resistors for both the interrupt the non maskable interrupt weight bus request and reset lines okay um, that's really important and the reason why that's important is because if you don't have pull-up resistors on those lines you will end up having an issue at your computer's just gonna stop now, a lot of people they just tie them to power but because I wanted to possibly interface with them at a later time I thought it wise to just go ahead and use pull-up resistors and I believe what I've actually used on this system is 2.2 K um, and 2.2 kilo ohm that is but in either case I, I mean you gotta have something on there I think 2.2 K is uh, very reasonable and then um, for the capacitors all of them are 100 uh, uh, nanofarad so you know of course they're all surface mount and um, they're you know all close to the ICs in which they um, are supposed to be but that's what we're looking at um, of course I'll try to give you guys a picture of the board itself and like I said I will probably end up offering these uh, if I do I will let you know about it here on YouTube and I will probably give you a link over to um, wherever I decide to sell them at whether it be Flea Bay or wherever but um, if you're interested just put in the comments that you like a board we'll see what we can do about trying to uh, get them out there but if not then I'm not going to waste the time or the money uh, most of these board houses you have to order them from overseas you're talking about usually about a month wait in order to get the boards in so if nobody's interested there's no point in it but anyhow hope you guys like the video uh, comments below and of course subscribe thank you